moment here. Sources telling Fox News the Pentagon has been asked to revise their plans on Syria 50 times. Retired Army Major General Bob Scales with me now, Fox News military analyst. Sir, good morning to you. Hi, Bill. 50 times. Is that normal? <laughs> No, of course not. Uh, here's how the process is supposed to work, Bill. Uh, the, the president makes a decision to go. He hands the mission off to his military planners, and they plan the strikes. And then the strikes are occasionally amended based on military necessity and the actions of the enemy. In this case, it's all based on the changing political currents inside this town. It's faintly reminiscent of, say, Lyndon Johnson crawling around the floor of the Oval Office picking targets for the Air Force to strike in Hanoi. Holy cow, I mean, you know, Assad's moving things around on the ground, the dynamics are changing <laughs> all the time. I know, I know the military is flexible, but 50 times is asking a lot. Yeah. BYA, because you asked, we're asking a lot of viewers about this story, sir. Dave Kuntz writes from uh, Newcastle, Washington. Am I missing something in your coverage of Syria's use of chemical weapons? Where did Syria get these weapons of mass destruction? Where's that history, sir? <laughs> well, early on it came from the Soviet Union. The Soviets exported over 100 tons, mostly of sarin, to the Syrians to face down the Israelis more lately. Uh, the Syrians are manufacturing this in their own laboratories in Damascus. Remember, sarin is essentially a white powder, but over time it degrades. And when you mix it with alcohol, which is the active ag agent, the agent loses its poten potency very fast. So while the, the Russian stocks are still available to the Syrians, they've got their own industry going inside the country. I see, and a lot of this came from, if you go back 20 or 30 years, out of Europe as well, I'm reading here. Whether it was Holland, yep. Switzerland, France, Austria, Germany, whole, whole list of them. There are many people who write us, sir, who believe that these weapons may have come from Saddam Hussein. Is that possible? Is that true or not? It's, a, uh, it's entirely possible. Uh, look, uh, sarin is a chemical, it's essentially an insecticide. Uh, and it's a chemical that is fairly easy to manufacture. Very difficult to dispense without hurting your own troops, but it's not that complicated a compound. And the recipe's been uh, with nations since 1938. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if that this stuff comes from virtually anywhere in the world because it's easily transportable but it's far more difficult to dispense. Uh, uh, we're waiting on a two-minute warning out of, out of St. Petersburg, sir. You have written a piece this morning in the Washington Post. You argue the Pentagon doesn't even want this war. Make your case. <laughs> well, uh, the, the, those who I speak to in the Pentagon are very nervous about about uh, about going to war simp without a strategic end state in mind. Uh, and they're very concerned that this war will escalate out of control. If, if, if leaders, if political leaders say things like, well, we're going to war to restore our credibility or we're going to war for our national honor, or if they say this war will be short, sharp, uh, glorious and bloodless, run for the doors. Uh -huh. And I think many people in the military are saying, no, we haven't thought this thing through. Uh -huh. We don't have an end state. We don't have a strategy. Okay. And it makes them very nervous, Bill. We're going to read that. Thank you, sir. Major General Bob Scales, appreciate your time out of Washington with us today.